By now you're all excited to run out there and convert a car to electric. But what car do you convert? A lot of times people ask me, can I convert any car? Or will a X work well as a conversion? Well, the truth is you can convert any car you want to electric, but some are going to be better than others. In general, if the car got good fuel economy as a gasoline car, in general it's going to make a better electric conversion. But there's a couple things we have to think about. One is just size. Uh, first of all, you might be a bigger person, you might be a smaller person, so you might need a, a larger or smaller cabin space on the car, just depending on who you are. Uh, you, may, you might also want either a two-seater or a four-seater, depending on how you use the vehicle. Maybe it's just you driving around by yourself. Maybe you need to carry a child seat or carry your family with you. So that's going to be important too. Also for size, we're going to need enough room for all of our batteries. Since we're using lead acid batteries, they're heavy and they're pretty bulky too. So we're going to need room for those to go. We also need to consider the weight of the car. Heavier cars are going to take more energy to push down the road, so they're going to be less efficient. We're not going to be able to drive as far in a heavy car as we would on a lightweight car. You also want to keep in mind the engine style and location. Engines can be in the front or the back of a car. They could be mounted longitudinal. They could be mounted transverse. For example, usually pickup trucks are rear wheel drive, but the engine is longitudinally mounted. It goes the direction of the length of the car. A lot of front wheel drive cars have a transverse mounted engine. For example, in my Geo Metro, it's front wheel drive with a transverse engine. And the style and the location of the engine is going to place some limitations on the size and the type of electric motor that you're going to be able to put in there. We also want to consider the body style of the car. A pickup truck is great because you can carry a lot of batteries in it. On the other hand, maybe you'd prefer a hatchback car where everything's enclosed, but you actually still have quite a bit of cargo space and it's a lighter weight vehicle. The choice is up to you, but you do want to keep all of these in mind when you're thinking about what car you want to convert. And the other big thing that we want to consider here is it's really just the body of the vehicle that we're using. The body, the suspension, so we want to make sure all that's good. You don't want to buy a rusty car to convert to electric. Those electric components are going to last forever, well that body is just going to rust apart. Now the suspension and the parts of the vehicle that hold the, the weight of everything, you want to make sure that those are sound when you purchase your vehicle. Now let's talk a little about the vehicle that I chose to convert. This is a 1996 Geo Metro. I bought it for $500. When I got it, it had rust on the rims, it had some ugly pink pinstriping down the side, and the engine did run. However, it still had a couple of uh, charming features on it. For example, the radio antenna was snapped off. Both outside mirrors were also snapped off, although they were included in the back seat. Uh, there was also an issue with the starter where the main fuse for that was broken. So when I went for a test drive, I had to have the hood popped up so that the owner could stick a wrench uh, across the electrical conductors to be able to start the car. So my test drive of this car consisted entirely of left hand turns because that's all I could do while sticking my head out the driver's side window. Uh, but overall the body on the car looked pretty good. Especially in my area, we use a lot of salt in the winter, and because of that, uh, car bodies do tend to rust up pretty quick. But overall, the car was not in bad condition. So I bought it, and I towed it home. Some of the things that I like about this car are simply the fact that it's a hatchback. Hatchbacks give you a lot of flexibility. You can carry people, you can flip the back seat down and carry a lot of cargo. They're just very nice that way, and they tend to get good fuel economy too. I also like that this car has both uh, daytime running lights and driver and passenger airbags, all of which I consider to be good modern safety equipment. So even though it's a smaller car, I feel very safe driving it. Another thing I like is that I actually have the right amount of headroom in this car. Um, the shape of the cabin is just a little boxy, and even though the car is a little narrower than my wife's Pontiac Sunfire, I still feel more comfortable driving it because I kind of have more room right around my head here. And that's one of those things that's just a personal preference. Uh, for example, a friend of mine is converting a Dodge Neon to electric, and he previously drove a PT Cruiser. Now, he's a big guy, but he liked the way that the PT Cruiser fit him, and because the Dodge Neon is based on the same frame, uh, they're very comparable vehicles, so he knew that for him, 
a Dodge would be a good car to work on because it already fit him and he knew how to fix a lot of things on there. So if you already have preference for a, a certain car or another, uh, that might be a good car for you to convert because you already know it fits you, you know how to do the repair work on it. Another thing you're going to want to look for in a car is that it has a manual transmission. Yes, you can convert a car with an automatic transmission, but it's going to be more complicated and less efficient. The simplest way to go is with a manual tranny. Because I was looking for a hatchback, something lighter weight, uh, and a manual transmission, I was looking at uh, Geo Metros and other similar cars. I was also looking at uh, like some of the older Saturns, lightweight, kind of a nice size and shape, or even like an old VW Bug. They were uh, very simple, rear engine, manual transmission, and it's been a very popular car for hot rodding for just about the longest time. Eventually though, I did find the Geo Metro and went with that. Now you might also want to take a look through the classifieds or Craigslist for cars marked with bad engine or blown motor. Because you're going to get rid of the, the engine anyways, you might be able to get a really good deal on a car that uh, just doesn't have one working. On the other hand, if you get a car with a good engine, you can pull that, sell it, and make back a lot of the money on what you paid for in the car in the first place.